Harold Godwinson was born in 1022 and he died on the 14th of October 1066. His father was the most powerful lord in the land, Earl Godwin of Wessex. When Godwin died in 1053, Harold succeeded him as Earl of Wessex. This arguably made him the most powerful figure in England after the king. Harold also became Earl of Hedefad in 1058. In 1062, he led a series of successful campaigns against Gruffid, the King of Wales. This led to King Gruffid's defeat and death in 1063. King Edward the Confessor was married to Harold's sister, but they did not produce an heir. Edward promised the future throne to William of Normandy, with the intention of bringing Norman influence into England. It is said that Harold was sent to Normandy to confirm this promise. Now that's the official Norman version of events, but this is strongly debated. But anyway, Harold's ship was blown off course, and when he landed ashore, he was taken captive by a local baron. The man who came to the rescue was Duke William of Normandy. Harold became half guest and half prisoner to William. Harold even took part in a military campaign with William against the Duke of Brittany. Now the Normans were very impressed by Harold's actions on campaign and as a reward William knighted Harold. This meant that Harold had to pledge obedience to William. William then led Harold to the Cathedral of Bayeux where he demanded that Harold pledge a solemn oath on sacred relics to support William's claim to the English throne. Harold was under pressure so he did as William demanded. Harold was then free to return home to England. In 1065, one of Harold's brothers, Tostig, was Earl of Northumbria. Tostig doubled the Northumbrian taxes and was said to have committed crimes, including murder. Local nobles rebelled against Tostig and overthrew him, storming his stronghold in York. Harold was sent to halt the uprising, but Harold found that the situation could easily start a civil war. So to avoid this, he sided with the rebels. This led to Harold's marriage alliance with Northern Earls. Harold's brother Tostig was sent into exile. Tostig plotted his revenge. Edward the Confessor had fallen sick on Christmas Day and he died in January 1066. On his deathbed he made Harold Godwinson King of England. For most Harold was the only choice for the throne of England. William of Normandy was out hunting when he heard the news. The rage grew within him and he made plans for war. William gave orders for a fleet of 700 ships to be built for the invasion of England. The Pope gave his blessing for the Norman invasion and allowed William to wear one of the holy relics into battle. King Harold called out the English reserve and stationed them along the English coast waiting for the Norman invasion fleet to arrive. They waited all summer, but the time came when they could wait no longer. Harold eventually had to disband his troops so they could get on with the harvest. Then news came to Harold that a large Viking invasion fleet had landed up north with a force of around 10,000 men. It was Harold's brother Tostig 
and the King of Norway, Harald Hardrada. King Harald Hardrada had a fearsome reputation across Europe. He was huge in stature and was a formidable warrior. Harald Godwinson rallied his troops again and marched up north and reached York on the 24th of September. Harold Godwinson's army, marching into York, freed its population and then moved on to Stamford Bridge. The Viking troops were resting at the River Derwent. It was a hot day and many of them had left their armour on the longboats, miles away. The Norwegians saw a dust cloud on the horizon. It was King Harald Godwinson and his Saxon army. The Vikings immediately crossed on the other side of the bridge and formed a defensive shield wall. The Saxon army rushed across the bridge to give battle to the Norwegian Vikings. The Battle of Stamford Bridge was a bloody and ferocious battle. King Harald's Saxon army defeated the Viking invasion force. Tostig was killed along with King Harald Hardrada. Harald spared the Viking survivors of the battle and allowed them to sail home. They set off in just 24 of their original 300 ships. King Harald Godwinson had won a brilliant victory. Then terrible news arrived from south. Duke William had landed an army in the Pevensey area. Harold Godwinson must add as many troops as he could and they rendezvoused at a thousand year old ancient tree which was a local landmark. That tree still stands today. Now the, the actual battle site of Hastings is, is now hotly debated. On, the, on October the 14th, 1066, at 9am, the battle began. King Harold Godwinson had to hold his line and survive the battle. The Saxons were locked together in a shield wall. The Norman infantry attacked and then the cavalry, but the Saxons remained firm. Their shield wall was impossible to break. Word got out that Duke William was dead. A panic ensued and the Normans retreated. Part of the Saxon wall pursued the fleeing Normans. It turned out, however, that William was alive and stood, raising his helm, to rally his soldiers. The Normans rallied and attacked the Saxons who had ran down the slope and were now isolated. The Norman infantry and cavalry cut those Saxons to pieces. The battle raged on for nine hours. The Normans pressed onto the Saxon defences and deployed their archers shooting arrows into their ranks. Then the unthinkable happened. King Harold Godwinson was killed. His death is still debated. The Bayeux Tapestry illustrates his death by showing him being shot in the eye with an arrow. Some point towards another figure being cut down by a Norman cavalryman. And some say that maybe both of these figures or in fact King Harold. King Harold's body was mutilated. His head was cut off, all of his right leg and half of his left leg. The battlefield was covered with hacked and dismembered corpses. Harold's wife, Edith Swanneck, found and identified her husband's body. King Harold Godwinson was the last Saxon King of England.